Welcome to Loop and Learn. This is Kenny Fox. This video is one of a series where I review a looper's data in Night Scout and explain what changes I would make if it were my child and why. The Loop app is a do-it-yourself closed loop algorithm to help automate insulin delivery. It is experimental and not approved by the FDA. This presentation is provided to assist you in making your own decisions in consultation with your healthcare professionals regarding your own diabetes self-management. You take full responsibility for building and running this system and do so at your own risk. Remember that your diabetes may vary and that I am not a medical professional and just sharing my approach to managing diabetes with Loop. When I'm looking at a Night Scout site from someone is first we want to get some defaults set up. So the defaults are not optimal for you to just pop in and look at this. Now you can you can change them in your browser when you want to, but you can change the defaults for uh, the whole site. So anytime you open it up, it's kind of the way you want. A couple things I'll do real quick. Make sure the basal render is set to either default or icicle, but we need something. Got to see the basal. I'm going to turn the alarms off so they don't go off on us while we're here. And these are the plugins I like to turn on to make sure you can see everything in loop. I'll turn it on loop. We're going to turn on the prediction. There we go. Okay, so this is basically what you normally want to see, right? You want this nice purple prediction line. You want to see the basal rates kind of up and down. And then ideally, you want most of these little pills, these uh, pieces of information in the top right visible. So that's the first step. Second step is we're going to look at the settings. I posted the settings. It's uh, kind of below my face over here. You can see the carb ratios, the ISF, and the basal rates. Hopefully, they're somewhat visible. If I need to zoom in on the basal rates so you guys can see it, I can. these are the settings we're working with that Boyd's got rolling right now. Um, as well as looks like he's got a current override on for uh, a target of 12. You guys can see that up here. So quick question, since I have you here, why do we have a override target of 12 going right now? Uh, he has soccer practice at 530. Okay, so, so you're getting ready for, for activity. Okay. Yeah, to, Great. he can't have like any IOB or he definitely goes low. So Okay, perfect. But he also ate a muffin too, so that kind of messed that up. <laughs> he still needs insulin for his food. Good call. Yeah. Currently, the basal rates are running 0 0.2, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.15. So kind of alternating a little bit. And then you have a big one. Looks like at bedtime, 830, right? Yes. OK. And then a 0 0.15. So he's usually asleep around 830 or after that? Yeah, around there. OK. All right. So for the most part, you're running close to one rate overnight, which makes us easier mostly to figure out. There's a little bit of combination here. Some of the math will be a little tricky. But first glance, you can just look across the 48 hours and you can kind of see how we're doing just staying in range, which for the most part, it's pretty good. Green is good. Nothing too crazy here. But first thing I always do, so this is something I do with Tessa every morning. If I need to, I can bring hers up as well, is I scroll back and look at the night and kind of look at the whole night. And if the basal at night's good, then we can kind of base everything off of that. And the, one of the reasons you do that, one is because it works in this most consistent and there's no, not a lot of food you're dealing with unless it's leftover from dinner that kind of stuff, no activity. So that's easy to do. And then when insulin needs shift, let's say they're getting sick or something like that, and you can catch it overnight, oftentimes that means you can go ahead and make adjustments for the rest of the day, sort of based off. What I do is I roll out of bed and then I look overnight and try to make sure that our basal is accurate for the day. And that's either gonna indicate an, an insulin need change if it's not right, or possibly a failing pod site, and I can catch it before she has breakfast. As we're gonna do with Boyd is I'm gonna grab down here and slide back. And we're going to take a look at this overnight. Now we do have an override of 90%. Looks like it's scaling back the insulin needs. So it's taking the basal rate at this time that this override is running and reducing it by 10%. So we'll have to take that into account as we look at this. The other thing to look at right here. So we're seeing pretty flat line, which is nice, like the whole night, right? As we scroll back, because there's nothing like super crazy here, it's looking pretty flat. The question is, are we flat at the right level? The correction range is down here. Looks like it's 5.6 to 6. You guys can see on the bottom. System's shooting for 5.6 to 6. So what we want to see is blood sugar hanging with near zero IOB in that 5.6 to 6 range. If it's hovering above, it may indicate basal's too weak. If it's running below, you'll also usually see negative IOB. So we'll have to watch for that. So we're at 5.4, kind of the low spot here after a few hours of sleep. And then dipping back down there, the low spot is 5.6. And then we go in the middle. We're a little higher, kind of over six, right? And then back down again. Now, if you, what I'm looking at, and you guys can look at with me, is this IOB here as we cruise 
over this line. As I've covered in previous videos, what you're looking for is positive or negative. I, a perfect basal, like perfectly set up with the perfect DIA of six hours, the way Loop's calculating it. If all that aligns, then you should see zero insulin on board should indicate a nice flat line. If there's no carbs and we're just talking about overnight here, if your basal's perfect, zero insulin on board should result in a nice flat line wherever that occurs. Negative insulin on board or negative active insulin inside the Loop app should indicate that Loop has taken a little bit too much away in terms of basal rate. And so that should result in blood sugar rising sometime around the time you see the negative building up. Sometimes it can take a little while, might be two, three, four readings, but the idea is that Loop has taken away more basal than should be needed. And so your blood sugar should go up. If you're not seeing rises with a negative, then your basal rate may be too strong. What we're seeing here is a little bit of negative, but basically zero. 0 0.04 is zero for all intents and purposes. So let's scroll back and look at that number again as I move back. You don't even get to negative 0.1, you get real close. There's where you get a little bit negative 0.13. And then zero, pretty much zero, slight negative, pretty close to zero. Now we go back a little further just to kind of see this where the basal rate goes up. Looks like you were making some um, basal rate changes last night. Is that right? Yeah, I was. I figured he was going to be a little bit sensitive. He had a soccer tournament okay. yesterday and then was playing soccer right before bed. So he was so all these uh, gray dots are like suspend and resume activities. This is when loop is you're changing a basal rate. It stops the pod sends the updated rates and then restarts it. And so oftentimes these little dots will show up when you're changing a basal rate. In case you forget what time you changed it, you can always look back and try to find these little dots. I would say we'll focus a little bit in this section here. You have a pretty elevated basal rate increase from 8.30 to 11. I always find suspect, but also necessary a lot of the times. So if you ever run into a problem where you think your basal is a little too strong in the next like four to six hours, first four to six, seven hours of going to sleep. It might be because this higher rise is is a higher basal rate is too much. Now, a lot of times that increased basal rate helps cover fat and protein from dinner. And so you may get more consistent performance by adding fat and protein to dinner. So quick question, Amanda, are you using like long entries at dinner time and adding in fat and protein? Or are you just sticking with the carbs right now? That's something I've been working on with like Carol had suggested. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to use the five hour absorption time. Yeah, around dinner. Um, Good. It looks like you did yeah. for this one here. And then I, last night too, I had put too many carbs in for what he really needed. Mm -hmm. Um, So I had taken some out because the prediction line was going way up and it was giving me a lot more insulin than he actually needed because he had juice there. Oh, right here. Okay. Right around there somewhere. I gotcha. Yeah. So that's good. You see that the um, prediction line, this purple prediction is going up and you can see it's an eventual of 10.3. So Amanda, gold star there. Um, seeing that it's going up and if you don't agree with that prediction, then making some adjustments to get Loop to agree to what you're thinking. And so you took away some carbs as a way just in case you overstated them or something like that, which is fantastic. And the big basil sort of helped catch that too. So that rise that did eventually occur. So that's good. Good job. So yeah, I always recommend using five hour entries where a, a little more generously at dinner time. Um, for reasons that are likely um, circadian rhythm related, your body transitions throughout the day from when you eat food and converting it immediately to energy or sugar um, to as you go throughout the day, converting more of it to fat to save up for your fasting that's going to happen when you go to sleep. I find that like dinner can sometimes if you eat the same meal at dinner and at lunch, it can hit differently, often slower at dinner. And we've always been fighting lows when we before bed when we're dosing it like we would at lunchtime. So what we started early on was using longer entries for anything kind of close to dinner, unless unless it's like obviously you know, spiky or like an apple or something like that, a banana, but like complex meals, your actual dinner using a longer than than normal. If you're not comfortable with five, then use four instead of the three hour, for example. But yeah, so and then also being generous with the fat and protein carbs, uh, a combination that we've talked about in previous videos where you take a portion of the fat and protein grams and add that as carbohydrates in loop because that's all loop knows in terms of food. Usually you're talking like a third ish of the grams as some kind of carb representation. Sometimes you hold that back until they actually go to sleep, but um, accommodating for the carbs at dinner can provide more consistency than simply raising basil to like a, a fairly dramatic number. Like yours is a pretty big difference between 0.15 during the day and 0.15 at night and then a 0.4. 
that's a pretty big jump. Mm -hmm. Um, and so if you're finding that you're sometimes catching lows, um, and you, especially if you see some negative insulin on board, um, it might be because, uh, that basil is a little too much and you might do better if you add more fat and protein, um, when he goes to bed for dinner, that way it scales. Like if you're having a larger meal or more fat and protein, you'll, it'll give more insulin and expect a bigger rise, which would make sense. Whereas if he eats light or skips dinner or whatever, you, you're less likely to go low. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Um, I am not really using like a, a third. Honestly, I just kind of guess because it's yeah. like 15 or 20 grams. And sometimes I put it up to 25. Last night might not be the best example because he didn't, he kind of had a snack early and then just had like milk at, I think at the 13 grams, I think it was in there, but he was kind of going low. One question I should have asked at the beginning, uh, what's your time zone? uh atlantic I atlantic guess. okay so you're two or three hours ahead of me okay yeah so something funny if you guys are ever looking at someone else's night scout is um it shows me the time and my time um not your time so if you're looking at this and be like that's not what we did at 6 p.m that's probably because it's what you did at 9 p.m or yeah or 8 yeah i guess it is yeah. yeah so like the 15 grams um, was closer to eight okay and what you were saying about how the carbs are different at like dinner Mm -hmm. His bedtime snack, I actually put that in when it's time to eat for like sometimes like seven or eight hour absorption, because I know if he's going to have like more than 0.4, sometimes he'll go low. And then if he doesn't seem as sensitive, I'll lower the absorption so he'll get a little bit more. I don't know if that's a clue that uh, yeah, ratio I, is Yeah, it's interesting. Too. Your Your ratios are very high. I wasn't going to start there, but yeah, your ratios are quite um, soft. Um for the age. So we'll have to figure out what that's all about here in a bit. Yeah. But well, um, I actually think they're quite strong because I, I lowered them because I was using the longer absorption. So he okay. was doing like uh, one to 40 or one to 45. Wow. That's really extreme. Okay. Uh, yeah. We'll talk yeah, about that in a second. Total sec. daily insulin is usually like only could be from like eight to 12 units a day. Oh, okay. That's pretty low. Interesting. And it's 10, he's 10, right? Yeah. 10 and a half. Okay. All 81 right. pounds. I'll just say it because it's, an observation. I'm actually helping a couple people right now, both with 10 year olds. I have seen quite a bit those two extremes. You either find there's kind of three categories, right? One 10 year old who's really light for some reason, not using a whole lot of insulin. They're a little more rare, but they occur. Then you have kind of an average 10 year old that uses a certain amount. And I can talk about in a second. And then you have the ones transitioning into puberty <laughs> that are drinking insulin like it's water. Uh, and they just make that change very quickly. It can be hard to keep up. 10, 11 is a tricky age for sure. Well, looking at the basil, I would say that the basil might be a touch heavy based on this morning, which was wise of you to take the 90% at around, I guess that would be like 5 a.m., uh, 4 or 5 a.m. Yeah. At 5 a.m. switches to 0. 0.2. Okay. So if we do a quick calculation on that, 0. 0.2, 10%, uh, roughly a quarter. Okay. So it's almost like a step down to 0. 0.15, not, not quite. So your 0.15 rate that you're using overnight is probably pretty solid. I see you alternating, which is fine as long as it's not causing any problems. Here you can see you're under your range and you have a slight negative buildup over the last hour mm -hmm. or two. And so that would tell me that the base is a little heavy. It's not causing any problem. Um, I would say whatever this rate was, 0 0.18 units per hour was probably a really good rate, maybe just mildly heavy. So again, I'd probably just kind of stick with your 0.15. Yeah, I would say like based on this night, 0.2 is probably a little bit much, at least at the 5 a.m. mark. Um, it worked out pretty well earlier in the night. Your switch from, you can kind of see these, if you guys see these um, dotted lines here across the top of the, of the graph, and they shift, they go down, and then it goes up again. These are the scheduled basal rates in Night Scout. You can see the 0.45 is back here, and it drops down to point. 1.5 and then up to 0.2. Um, so you can see where that changes. And you can kind of see the 0.15 ends up being a little bit light, um, even with your big increase, because you're riding just above your range, but you're running at zero insulin on board. Now, you end up he ends up settling right back down and at a really good range. So I'm not sure that I would change the rate here right now, but normally my rule of thumb is we keep it really simple. So we try to keep as few rate changes as possible. So you might have an elevation for the first couple hours of the night. That's fine. Again, that's always the one that I pull back first if you have problems. Um, the next rate, you just kind of run for 
you know, that middle part of the night. Cause normally what you see is you see like the growth hormones and things are most strong in the early part of the night and they fade as you go. So you'd want stronger to weaker. So you'd start at your point four, you might run a point two um, at 11 PM. You guys can see the settings there um, on the lower section below my face. Um, and just run the point two until it usually makes sense. Um, and for you, it looks like about 2 AM is where you make that shift. So I might just change the 11 PM 0.15 to a point two. Just keep it simple, running the same rate. Um, and then if you need to, you can extend the point two out to two or three or 4 AM and then transition to a point one five that you would run like you are, you're running point one five in the day. So I have a quick question for you. Since I see a point two increase at 5 AM. Does he sometimes have like a morning rise? Is that why you have a slight bump there? Or is yeah, it to help with breakfast? Yeah, he usually does. Okay. No, it's usually like uh, 5.30 or so. Okay. He usually starts going up. And you mentioned a uh, snack Maybe earlier so. than normal. Did he go to bed earlier than normal? He went to bed later last night. Later, okay. It was like 9 o'clock or so, but okay. he was kind of running around. and. Yeah. So last if you... Night, this is... Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say this was a pretty good night. Like it was. Usually he is like running above target with those basal rates. Okay. And you you have a couple challenges with that I was going to address is you're using temp basal instead of auto bolus. And when you're yeah. using it's low, low basal rates, like anything under about 0 0.5, 0 0.6, um, you're not likely to get any insulin when loops increasing every five minutes and changing frequently so what can happen is the result is the iob is accurate you see that he's still going up and loops increasing temp basal rates but you notice the iob doesn't really go up much um it kind of stays around the same because really what loops happening is it's switching so quickly that it's not delivering any insulin on a few of those um sections so it's just really slow to kind of make those small corrections because you're using temp basal rates with really low basal rates so the the consequence is often that you're running a little bit above target and he's a little bit slower to get insulin overnight when you have slight rises. Um, so you might have better performance with auto bolus unless you're worried about him going low. If that's if that's been a problem in the past, we can try to address that. But auto bolus is yeah. at least overnight yes. with low rates are often helpful, but you have to be careful not to. You can't overstate the basal if he's in between rates. So some of you guys who are older or maybe have higher basal rates, 0 0.6, 0 0.1.0, something like that. Um, this doesn't really apply so much, but when you're talking about low rates, um, body needs can be kind of between those rates. So he might need something between a 0.15 and a 0.2. That's really a, a substantial in terms of percentage change of insulin. But the pod can only do certain rates, right? It's not like a tandem pump or a Medtronic where you can have smaller rates. And so by going on the heavier side of basal, because you got to pick one, right? Uh, with auto bolus can often send a little a person that's really sensitive low very easily. Yeah. And if that's what were you guys experiencing that before, Amanda? Yeah, we have. Okay. And especially with the like compression lows too. Mm -hmm. Like it might he might be laying on and then he rolls over and then it gives him a little too much. And, okay. And just a little much is a lot. Yeah, then that means you get to pick where you want to be. You either need to run on a slightly lighter side of basal overnight with auto bolus. Or you go ahead and stick with your temp basal and he'll probably run to slightly above target. Um, the mom I'm helping right now, um, this last week or two, has opted for running on the lighter side of basal with auto bolus and has been happier with that. But you have to often temp down the, or lower the, the ISF number to help compensate because you're going to be running on the lighter side of basal, but you want to make sure there's enough correction there to be helpful um, to kind of keep that line down in your range. So, um, but either way is fine. If you're... If you're really worried about trying to get this six down to a five and a half, then um, you probably it'd probably be easier to do with um, auto bolus and uh, a lighter basal, if that makes sense. So um, all that to say, people with low basal rates, it's sometimes hard to get precisely right uh, numbers and right where you want it to be. So you got to give yourself some grace and figure out on which side of that line you want to live on. Um, once he starts using more insulin, your life will get easier in that sense. It's like, as long as you adjust to it, you'll have less life in between the rates. Give yourself a little bit of grace there. Ratios will come back to you. So if you're saying this is better than normal, I would say based on oh, yeah. this, you've pretty much nailed it. I would just lighten up the basal, that 0.2 in the morning just probably needs to go back down to a 0.15 and then you're pretty solid. Um, 
that's effectively what you did with this override. So good job, Amanda. Um, Thank you. Real quick, we will pull up the reports since you're saying this is unusual. So we will check IOB, COB. I turn off insulin distribution because it's just big and takes up a lot of space. Run it for the last week, and I'm going to make it a little bit larger. You guys might not have noticed this little drop down here. You can make the picture larger. And then let's take a look. So here's last night. Here's the night before. Again, slightly above. Remember the range? The top of the range is 6. So this dotted line across is your um, is 6. So slightly above target. But again, as we discussed with low rates, that's fairly typical um, with temp basal as the um, dosing strategy. And the night before, assuming you didn't modify the rates too much, which you may have higher than lower. And then you see this. So this is good for everybody. You see this, this blue line that goes underneath here, the graph. That's a negative, that represents negative active insulin or negative insulin on board. And so you don't really want to see this negative stuff without a rise. Now you do see a little bit of a slowdown and rise. So if you didn't treat, for example, this particular one, I don't know if you remember if you did or not, um, then you would say basil's too strong. But Amanda, do you know why basil was too strong? Uh, see the top yeah. here? <laughs> I think uh, you have a well, yeah, you have a well labeled override that says 110%. So you probably ran an override that provided more basil yeah. and it was just too much. I understand why you did it because he was creeping up yeah, and you wanted to knock it down. Too, yeah. So totally like totally makes sense why you did that. But all those one that 110 eventually added up to too much. And I think I gave him like a bolus there too. Yeah, yeah, you did. You knocked it down, which is, yeah. I think, fine. Um, the nice part is you saw some negative at one point. Um, now, if we go ahead and look further into the day, you can kind of see more negative here at 4 p.m. That's an indication that, like, basil might be a little too strong. It's a little funny. You have higher targets, which, again, good labeling. So Loop's trying he's to pull. soccer there. Yeah, he's trying to pull up. And, it's, you know, I think it's it's probably fine because I see you're shooting. Actually, doesn't stand out because you're shooting higher. And the numbers are lower. So you'd expect some negative and him to come up. And you say he's playing soccer, so he's being active. Yeah. That combination can, can can often keep blood sugar kind of more level, even when you'd expect it to rise. But what often happens is once soccer's over, all that negative catches up and then he goes up. So um, and that's yeah. fine. You just gotta know it's coming. It looks like you did. So he ate and went back up and had a good rest of the night. So this isn't bad, this negative here, just so everyone sees it. You can see these overrides at the top. She's shooting for 12 and for 10, and blood sugar is around 6 and 7. So totally makes sense. Loops taking away basil, and no problem there. Overnight, you go back to Friday, you get some negative insulin on board down here, but fairly level, right? Right in the target range, negative insulin on board and not going up. So that may mean that basil was a little strong, but... Not a lot. He's not going up, which is unfortunate. And the really stinky part about the Night Scout, the way it's built right now, or the way Loop loads data into Night Scout, not necessarily Night Scout's fault, um, is that we can't see exactly how much this was. For those of you that use Android APS or something like that, or open APS um, based systems, the data gets loaded in here and you can kind of hover over each one of these dots and see exactly what it was at that point in time. So this might be a really tiny amount of negative, and it's likely what it is because his basal rates are so low. Um, and he didn't go down and didn't go up. While concerning, you just want to watch out for it. It's not something that I would change because he's right in range and he didn't go shooting up afterwards. And he didn't crash as soon as you gave him food. Oftentimes, if basil's too strong, once you bolus, it's bolusing for this negative amount and the food and ends up sending him low. So, Hannah, um, yeah. I hate to interrupt you, but we're uh, 35 time. minutes in. Okay. Well, well, you know, as we're looking at this, I think some other things people would want to talk about is the way that the IOB and the COB lines decay. Yeah. That's a really important concept and it would help a lot of people. I mean, we've had a lot of discussion here, a great discussion about, um, you know, IOB and. Yeah, it's a good point. We should move over to that because the if you guys look at the top of the settings here, we're talking in 20s and then jumping up to 35s in the carb ratio and ISFs at 13 and 12. And so for those that are um, not millimol um literate a 13 is about 234 so over 200 to 20 to 30 with a basal rate around 0.15 and 0.2 is fine it might be a little bit high for the age um but having something fairly sensitive uh, isf pretty high um with the basal rate's not totally uh, unusual that said carb ratios over about 20 
are strange for almost any age child um, that are not newly diagnosed. Um, not saying it it's never like ap appropriate. It is it can be appropriate, but it's very unusual to have something over a twenty or twenty five um, if you're not like really freshly diagnosed and or really young. So thirty five is surprisingly weak, and I'm surprised he's not higher. That said, Carol's pointing out the uh, red lines. So look at the red lines here. This is carbs on board. And then the blue lines are the insulin on board. So carbs on board, they're decaying. And they're not decaying at a at a rate that is unusual. Um, I do see like this one here on Sunday. The red line gets down to zero. Insulin on board is negative, And he does go up. That's fine. This is the soccer. Sunday is the soccer. Yeah, your tournament. soccer. Soccer makes it complicated, doesn't it? Um, let's look at this here then. We're shooting higher. He's not shooting up. So if the red line drops down to zero and he keeps going up and you have insulin on board, then that usually means there's still food left and your settings are off. But I'm not seeing a lot of that. I mean, a little bit here in the morning, this was a little crazy. This red line dropped kind of catastrophically <laughs> down to eight Which and he's continuing to go up. So if this was a bad pod site, that would make sense. Um, but I do Is see Sunday. That is Sunday, yeah. Saturday, Friday. That's Saturday. But he is higher most of the time breakfast, but not awful. More than you'd want, though. Ten's not ideal. Um, and your the carbs on board are not running out. So here's the deal: carbs on board is not running out, and um, like super fast, which would indicate that your carb ratio would be way weak. So here's I just had to do this with someone this last week. So if you feel like he needs more insulin for meals, which I would think is probably true, at least in the morning. Um, but you don't want to be if you lowered his carb ratio for the morning, for example, um, this red line would extend even further and continue to live on for longer than you'd want. So uh, what you may have to do is you would move carb ratio and ISF together. So if you were going to, let's say, lower the carb ratio by, let's say, 10 percent, you'd want to also lower the ISF number by 10%. That would make sure that the red lines, the active carbs, um, sort of stay the same if you move both at the same time. If you move both up or down at the same rate, then um, you'll maintain active carbs sort of calculated in the same way, no matter what. So if you felt like you needed a little bit more insulin, I don't know that I would just lower the ratio in the morning for the 530-21. The afternoons are a little bit wacky. And I think that's partially because of the our ratio being 35. How long have you used 35? That's a really big number. That's lower. I don't even use that for like not even a month with okay. the five hour absorption. But I like he on weekdays, he has the recess. I probably don't record it um, that well where you see the higher targets and might uh -huh. be where he's going into recess. And he does have usually a tab okay. or something on a weekday. Yeah. He recesses it at. He's not super high, which is good, um, especially with your higher targets. He's not he's not actually reaching up to them. It's very unusual. I'm not sure that I would change a whole lot. What I would do is I would start to bring these 35s down to 30 and then 27, then 25. As you see his numbers running higher than, you know, when you're not saying target high, because that is so really we, unusual. I would expect that to shift over time, but he is active during the day and you have soccer. So I, I get that. It's so unusual it's not kicking your butt on the weekend. Go ahead. See the like the weekdays. Um, usually when I dose him for his snack and his meal at school, mm -hmm. I usually like dose him and throw on a higher target because he if he has the recess or whatever continuing like and for the next recess, he'll go low before okay. the recess. And that's at the one to thirty five. Okay. So you're so I usually get everything in and and put a target on so then the basil stop. And you're not shorting the carbs, right? You're stating all of them? I short them some. You short them so some. Are we using settings to adjust for something that should be handled with an override? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, I don't really, like, I kind of, at this point, just doing what seems to work is getting it all shut down because as oh. soon as he goes outside, he drops down. Right. So the challenge with that strategy is... T1Ds are dynamic, and as soon as something changes, his settings aren't going to be right. His schedule will change or something mm -hmm. will happen. So learning how to use overrides to your advantage 
is probably a better strategy than adjusting settings. Yeah. Now, let Kenny weigh in. Yeah, so interesting. So for the most part, what you're saying is you're entering most of the carbs for recess, lunch, etc., and immediately setting a higher target, right? So you're bolusing for the whole thing and then setting the higher target. Is that right? Yeah, because okay. he doesn't usually have like a huge pre-bolus. Right. And he eats quite carby too, so they hit quite fast. You could simplify your life a little bit. Um, are you at school or are you doing this remotely? Uh, remotely. He does the the dosing and then I do the overrides for him. So if it's working, because you're not actually, luckily, so again, gold star for Amanda, she's not using percent changes. She's not modifying the settings every time she needs to put on an override. She's just changing the target, which is good. Um, for the most part, I see a couple percentage changes, but that's less common on here. So that's good. It makes it easier to track your settings. You might have better success running like maybe two or three correction ranges, like maybe change a correction range for, you know, starting at maybe like 10 or 12 or something like that, somewhere in the recess time frame, setting the correction range higher. Now you'd have to want, you probably want to change it back on the weekend if you don't want them shooting that high. You might not have to keep turning on an override every time he eats <laughs> if you yeah, just set it slightly time. higher. <laughs> yeah. The correction range does two things, right? It's not, it's, it's where loop is aiming. But it's also at what level Loop is allowed to start taking automated action. What that means is if you set a target of 15, Loop's not going to Loop's going to aim for 15, but it's also not going to even if it predicted a, a rise, it's not going to be able to give insulin for that automatically other than just turning on the basal rate until blood sugar gets to 15. So if you just raise the correction range to say eight or nine for a couple hours during the day, You'll dose for it, and then if blood sugar doesn't reach eight or nine, then Loop can't add any more, if any. If any. I'm not sure I would make a correction range as aggressive and high as you're setting with your overrides, but it might allow you to not have to pay attention every time he eats and set another override, if that makes sense. Normally, for most 10-year-olds, I would say you need a little bit more insulin for meals, and we can adjust some things in correction ranges so you don't have to babysit this quite so much. Someone that's running a lower rate, like a 0.2 and 0.15 at the age of 10, and looking like it's pretty like reasonable, they are going to be quite sensitive. Um, and I would expect his carb ratio to start coming down any any minute. Like you just need to be ready for that carb ratio need to start coming down to twenty and fifteen somewhere down that range. Most of the kids I see that are kind of in this point two point one five at ten are kind of in the like fifteen fourteen to kind of sixteen carb ratio range. So. Just be ready for that when it's needed. Right now, I'm not sure I would modify a whole lot. I think you're doing really well. I would say ISF is likely a little on the high side, and that's helping keep your uh, balancing your super high carb ratios. So I would play around maybe on the weekends with bringing the 35s down again, maybe to a 30, and then maybe dropping the ISF about that same percentage. So maybe like a 12 and a half, for example, okay. and creep them down together in pairs because you're, again, your active carbs are fairly appropriate in most cases and start bringing them down and see if that allows you to bring these um, numbers while well, I know they're in the green they're on the higher end they're between six and ten so if you can bring the ISF and carb ratios down on the on the high sides just a little bit together you may find that you can shift those numbers down just a touch and still not have a low um but I get yeah. your your concern. I would so I would experiment on the weekend um, when he's not playing soccer. <laughs> so unfortunately, not a whole lot to change. I think I would say the point two at five a.m. needs to go back down to point one five, unless you're seeing that rise very often. But it was, I think it's just a little bit too much. Other than that, uh, and then the eleven p.m. could probably come up to point two, just to make your life a little simpler and identifying what needs to change. Mac Monday, you said this looks like a bad sensor and bad pod is what this looks like. Um, to because this pattern is not normal for yeah, most of your nights it may be and you're using higher overrides 120 130 140 this was likely a bad pod <laughs> bad site um and mondays i guess it monday might not be a good example because i think where his activity increases through the week mm -hmm. like usually mondays he does run higher i guess Okay. So last thing I'll point out is if I was trying to figure out like this Monday was why it was unusual, I need to figure out if you change settings. And if you didn't remember, I'll let you guys see this and then we can wrap up. You can go over to the profile tab 
And now that I've run it for the whole two weeks, I could go back, I could look at this one, maybe take a screenshot like we have here on the left. And then I could pop back to Monday, which was uh, 12th. So if we go back to somewhere on the 12th, I can look at a few of the ones from the 12th and see if they look substantially different. Maybe like in the morning here. They probably do because I'm always tinkering. You're tinkering, yeah. So if we go like morning, <laughs> where's the 12th? How about earlier in the morning? Because remember, Loop Loop sends a profile, which is inefficient, but Loop sends a profile change to Night Scout every time an override is set. Um, and you were setting override. So if we do like 5 a.m., that's fine. So ISF was lower. Basal rates were roughly the same without the 0.4 you have going on now. And carb ratios were definitely weaker. But yeah, the sensitivity was actually lower overnight and the basal rates were roughly the same. So you weren't changing it dramatically on that day. So it's likely either his insulin needs changed, which happened, or the pod site was bad. Since you had issues all day long, it may have been um, the pod site. But you guys, it's good to know. You can go look around at the profiles tab and to see if you changed anything that day. It will reflect in the uh, report here, um, but all you all you can see is relative changes. You see basal rates up and down in these dotted lines. Um, and so like if you looked at Monday, all you could see is that there was a change here at 4 a.m. and then down to 8, but you don't know what the rate was. So it's a little tricky. You have to go to that profiles tab. I would simplify your overnight, make the 11 p.m. 0.2, the 5 a.m. 0.15, and then if you find yourself seeing negative IOB and dipping low, and even in even as late as like 12, 1, 2, 3, even 4 a.m., I would back off this 8.30 and just knock it down a little bit. And then accounting for fat and protein for dinner, or at least knowing that if you have a higher fat and protein meal, you might want to add a few carbs in if he starts going up right before you go to sleep is another way to, to look at it. Because I know you're, it sounds like you're a little gun shy because he seems fairly sensitive and you can overshoot how much he needs for food pretty easily because you're dealing mm -hmm. with someone that's more sensitive than the typical. Um, so I get that. Um, but if you're having mixed results with negative IOB overnight, like going looks like basil's too strong, I would probably back off on the 830 one you have going right now as your first spot to work from. Uh, we got to wrap up, but if I'll stay here for like maybe three or four minutes, if somebody has any questions they want to ask, um, looking at this graph here or ask Amanda, any questions? I think she's doing pretty well. Do you feel like you're doing well, Amanda? I should ask. Uh, sometimes, but it just, just changes so much that I always guess, second guess that I have things right. You could be changing things a little too frequently. Um, yeah. I'm one that changes things a lot, so I'm not going to knock you for it. But at the same time, mm -hmm. like I would probably leave your basal rates as steady as you can because they don't seem like they're changing very often and play around with the food base settings. So carb ratios and ISF, as I talked about before, um, as your way of playing, because uh, yeah. more at least as your go to um, that way, at least if you're tweaking those, you you're not really affecting. You can always change it back, right? It'll just change how Loop yeah. sees the carbs, and it'll like pull basil back if it if you like went from a twenty carb ratio back up to a twenty five, um, or if you go from a twenty five to a twenty, then it'll give more insulin to help compensate potentially. So mm -hmm. I would just stick for right now. I would say your basils are looking pretty solid, other than that risky one at night. But again, it worked fine last night, and it hasn't caused a problem. Just watch out for that one, and then um, play around with the food settings because those are on the outer range of normal. And so those are probably going to change first would be my guess. Yeah. Yeah. His activity makes it really tough too, because he he'll eat and then just jump up. And yeah. I would say because of all the activity you're doing really well. That's why I'm saying good job because yeah, he's yeah, not crashing you. and you're not having to catch lows a whole lot. I'm just a little worried that like you're having to hit overrides all the time <laughs> and it's a little exhausting for you, but um, I would say it's, it's pretty manageable and you may not need to, or you need to set those overrides. One last tip, set the overrides for longer, run a 10 target for three or four hours and come back and check on it later. Right. Rather than setting it every 60 minutes. Right. So, so let's pause here for a second. Does yep. anybody else have any questions for Kenny based on the graphs they've seen today or more general questions tip that I've learned recently. So I'm not one to change settings on a regular basis, but, um, <laughs> <coughs> Marion, Marion has said, you know what, if it's lows, change it right away, get rid of the lows, right? Adjust your settings. If it's highs, tinker, but then wait three days. Like don't be changing things to adjust for highs that often. You could easily do hand-to-hand -hand combat, right? Somebody needs a little bit more insulin, give them a bolus, but don't adjust your settings based on one day because your settings honestly are meant to be for most days. Yeah, I think that that's a good tip is if you're going low, especially if you suspect 
we don't have negative IOB to confirm, but you did increase basal or it feels like basal is too high. Basal causes a lot of like you eat and like you're really low and steady and don't really have a spike. And then you kind of have this drop like two hours later, like unusually short duration, you start dropping. That can be an indication of basal's too high. I'm I'm one to pull basal back when I see those things pretty quickly. When we're running high, it's so easy for it to be a bad pod site or you just missed on a meal, or if you're managing a kid, they ate something and they forgot to tell you and they didn't answer it. Um, it's really easy for those things to be the reason why you're high. Um, and so changing settings to deal with a high isn't always the right answer. Sometimes you just bolus the high and see if it resolves and how it resolves and see how it goes. I have had to deal with our fair share of bad pod sites, like leaking all the time. And Tessa's um, rates are high enough that we can do this. Someone like Boyd, this wouldn't work. There's not enough insulin volume. But um, I've noticed as Tessa's insulin volume increases her total daily dose, I can bolus like, you know, five, six, seven units on a high. Um, and I suspect a pod site. And that will give me plenty of insulin to see it pooling and wet and gross, <laughs> showing that it's not working well. Um, so I can prove that it's a bad pod site without having to wait hours and hours and hours. So um, but that is something you can try is manually bolus a high and then try to figure out what went wrong later or see if it happens again. If you can get back down into range, see if it happens again with the next meal. Then you're talking, okay, maybe it's uh, it's basal. Maybe something doesn't need to change, but I agree. Yeah, quick quick to fix the lows and slower to fix the highs um, in terms of settings. But you can bolus if you want to take action. You don't have to do nothing. I no, you're appreciate doing... the feedback. It's really helpful and reassuring because... You often wonder if you're doing anything right. Yeah, I would just, just my warnings around the extremes, those 35s and high ISF, those will probably yeah. need to change over time. And then, you know, watch for that high basal rate you put in place um, and then smooth out and simplify your basal rates just a touch. But you have a really good setup for the most part. And I, and while the 35 is pretty crazy, I really can't complain about its performance in the graphs for the most part. So um, considering how active he is, so that's hard to... Um, if he stops if he stops being active soccer season ends and you start running high then yeah carb ratios need to come down and you were just compensating for activity so his real carb ratio is much lower but you'll find out once he stops being active like every single day so yeah i don't know if that'll be soon i know right yeah so you know just a heads up thank you yeah all right guys uh we'll catch you later keep on looping thank you thank you, thank you.